gang, so um, I thought we'd look at um, some strumming patterns, some tips, some advice, some help. And uh, I know it's been a little bit complex when we're doing Zoom sessions and we're different people are leading the, the session and there's a little bit of lag, a little bit of clarity missing. And um, it can be quite difficult to follow what people are playing. And, and, and obviously that's mainly because we're playing online and there's a little bit of lag. When we're playing alive with people, it will be a lot easier. We'll be able to communicate better and uh, visually see each other and hear clearer what's going on. So, um, but in the meantime, some exercises and some few tips that I think might help us. So for starters, if someone's leading the group and they're playing a rhythm, and you think it's a, a and they play for a song and you think oh, I really like that rhythm or that was different I didn't know that rhythm then always ask always ask them what did you play there what was the pattern you were playing ask them to break it down we're all you know we're hit we're all in it together and especially as a, as a group we need to be helping each other so that person should be able to give you some guidance of what they're doing and how they're doing it and that will help obviously the next time you play the song and if you're leading the group and you are playing something quite interesting then offer this is what i'm doing guys i'm doing a down down up up down i'm doing the island strum I'm doing this rhythm pattern i'm doing a doing a little technique there and if people pick it up great and then they can play along with you and feel that they're joining in properly because they're obviously imitating the rhythm that you're playing as well um and then obviously if they go into the song or if you're a leader and you go into the song a count would always help one two three four one two three four are you ready guys two three four and then into the song so if you can follow it lead into the song and i know some people do this so that's not a problem it's just obviously just general tips for um people out there that are leading the group do a count that will help um not always needed depends on if it's a song we've done before if it's a song we haven't done before or not um but that will help and then if you've got a count so if you're starting out and you're at the beginning and end of the spectrum, spectrum and you're trying to get used to playing these chord changes, then keep the beat simple. One, two, three, four, and then the strums. One, two, three, four. Keep the strums nice and simple. All in the double. Two, three, four. This will help with the change in two. you will have more time more space and just following the beat and trying to keep keep that um, strum nice and light will really help and if you can keep the beat and keep the time of of the the basic pulse strum one two three you can see on this chart above me head actually the down strums fall on the one two three four that's what we're looking at those down strums uh, if you can keep that then the next step will be to add in upstrokes um, if you can't keep that and keep the chord changes, then you shouldn't really be making it too much more complicated anyway, because in a group scenario where that happens and you get a few people playing at a time, it just sounds like a bit of a mess of noise. So always keep things simple when you're playing with people and practice the patterns that you know will sound good with the song at home. And then when you've got them good, and then you can play along with them in the group. And um, I guess when we're in groups and we're all mucking around, there's no harm in experimenting with patterns and we can all interact with each other and give tips and advice. So um, this little exercise then is is basically looking at that. We're keeping the beat. We're going one, two, three, four. And then I'm strumming one, two, three, four. Now, a little bit of extra help or advice with the uh, strumming will be the what you're doing with the wrist. So um, you'll notice that you don't want to keep the arm stiff and use arm movements. It shouldn't be arm movements at all, really. I mean, you get a, an arm movement to get the hand below and above the strings, but it isn't the arm movement that's making that physical motion, if you like. It's the wrist. So, And the wrist will help you because if you can keep the wrist moving like that, so you're going to graze across the string. You see I'm grazing down, grazing up. graze those strings you don't want to be like too much finger stuck in it's gonna, it's gonna be really hard and then you feel like you've got to force your way for it you start using your arm it becomes stiff the rhythm is not very fluent so to get a nice fluent rhythm one two you as you come down with your arm which is a very minimal arm movement is literally just i'm literally just moving a very small amount and then i'm, I'm following through the wrist 
the arm coming over very slightly then the wrist is making the rest of that motion and that's the main it's the main movement you're going to get is the wrist so if you can work on restricting the arm movement more wrist and keeping it light and loose and grazing the strings you'll have a better sound in rhythm and more fluent one two three four then when i want to hit those other strings on so you notice if i'm going down strum coming up straight afterwards, down, 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 so I'm just hitting the strings, and because the action has got, a, it's kind of like a curve, I'm, I'm, I'm going like that, it's the opposite action, and that's causing my, my wrist to just turn ever so slightly, okay, so that's one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and, so this is the pattern one, First thing to do, pattern zero if you like. One, two, three, four. Keep the beat. One and two and three and four and and then we're going to pattern two. One, two and three, four and one, two and three. For pattern three. One and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. Notice that my my wrist move, my hammer is just in the same thing all the time. It's keeping the beat. I'm going down, up, down, up, down, up. Now, when we don't play a strum, and I go for, like if I was to miss the strings on a down or up, we call this a ghost strum, is where you're strumming it, but nothing's heard. Okay, so you're ghost strumming. And the idea would be that if you are playing something and you want to make it interesting, you're playing like a downbeat, you can miss. And a lot of people do this without realising, as they get quite good at playing the down and up strums, they will miss a few and their, their fingers will come slightly off and catch less of the string or more of the string. And then that's where we get what we call accents, where you're hitting it louder and quieter and missing. You create interest in rhythms. So at the very beginning, we're not worried about that at the moment. If it happens, it's fine. As long as you're keeping one, two, three, the down strum in the right place. So then it doesn't matter. So if someone's playing a crazy rhythm, one, two, three, it's not a crazy rhythm, but if someone's playing one, two, three, four, one, and you can hear the count, and you go one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, four, and one, and two, three, and four, and you're playing down and up strums, but you're playing in time, in other words, you're in line with their pulse beats, the one, two, three, four, it will sound good, it will sound musical. And this is what really should happen when we're in a ukulele group. So when we're all playing together live, there'll be people that will play quite intricate rhythms and there will be people who play quite basic rhythms, but we should all be able to keep count and keep time and keep tempo. And if you can keep that, then as you get better, you can add more upstrokes and technique and some more sophisticated ideas within the strumming pattern, like a break or a, pick, a pick, picking pattern, because it's still based on that essential one, two, three, four, keeping the beat, keeping the count. Um, I hope this makes sense. So um, yeah, so looking at um, our technique, so the wrist, uh, looking at our count, one, two, three, four. Um, obviously, the other things like asking them, um, oh, that what was that rhythm? How do you play it? Uh, you know, I know it's a basic thing, but if someone plays something and we're not quite sure what they're playing, just ask. That's the best thing. And uh, and if you are leading, you're a bit more experienced. Bear in mind there's people less experienced or people that are learning. And so if you're playing a rhythm a certain way and you think it might be useful, interesting, always demo the rhythm beforehand and help with a leading count. And the exercise today was you counting to four, playing down strums, one, two, three, four, and then running through these patterns. And if you can run through these patterns without stopping, these patterns seem simple, but trying to connect them and keep the beat and keep the count is quite challenging. So that's your, your aim is to go one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one, two and three, four and one and two, three and four. Back to the beginning, one, two, three, four. So I, I kept the beat. I kept the beat, I kept the time, and if someone was playing along with me, so if someone was doing the first pattern, someone was doing the second pattern, someone was doing the third pattern, someone was doing a very basic strum, just playing one on every bar, and then there's someone else playing a crazy rhythm with lots of extra notes and technique or whatever, but we were all playing on the one, two, three, four, and got the same count, it will sound very musical. And that's the key, that's, that's the key with all of what we're trying to achieve, is we're trying to sound musical at the end of the day. So um, yeah, I, 
I thought I'd do this video because a few things have come up in the, in the sessions and I, I think that um, this will be quite a useful exercise and, and, and things that will be worthwhile to remember. Now, there are on the top of some of the sheets rhythm patterns. Not everyone follows those. And sometimes those patterns, maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. Maybe they're um, just not the way that person's playing it. And maybe they are playing it, you don't understand it. So obviously there's a lot of detail in the in the strumming patterns when they're written at the top so if you need to learn those and master those that's one thing but this these patterns here you'll be able to play with anything that's in 4-4 so even if there's a pattern above and you don't understand it we're not quite sure what they're doing or the, the person that's playing is playing something quite a little bit different then these rhythms will work and you can play these rhythms over top and they will sound musical and that that's the whole point is giving you something that you've got a go to that you can use and uh, and that's it for today really so good luck with that and give me some feedback let me know how it's going and and i'll uh, see you in our, our our next session soon all right take it easy